I am working on a dress to wear to a wedding at the end of the summer. Instead of tackling the whole thing at once, I decided to break it down into individual parts and make sure that those parts work correctly before making the full dress. I already have a skirt that I'm happy with and I made a couple videos about how I got to that point. You can find them here, or is it here? <laughs> I'm working with a bunch of bamboo rayon that I got from Color Mart. This is really drapey and it knits really nicely. In the last video I made a prototype of the top and it did not go well. In this video I'm going to figure out what went wrong with that pattern, fix it, and then knit a full dress putting the skirt and the top together. Alright, let's do this. Let's figure out what went wrong with the last prototype. This is the top that I made. It is too wide, so I suspect that the gauge that I got in this top is not the same as the gauge that I was expecting. So this is the gauge swatch that I was working from. It's knit at the same tension as this, but it's in the blue yarn. And then this is the skirt that I already made that came out as expected. So let's double check the swatch and make sure that the gauge is what I expected it to be. Okay, so the gauge on the swatch comes out to 9 stitches by 13 rows. So 9 stitches and 13 rows. And sometimes your gauge in a swatch is going to be different than the gauge in the final piece because of the amount of weight that you hang or some other factors. So let's double check the skirt. And this has already been washed and blocked. Okay, so the gauge for the skirt comes out to 8.25 stitches and 12 and a half rows, which is not that different than what we got with the swatch. So it's not too far off, but I'm definitely going to use this if I ever knit with the blue again. So let's take a look at the top and see what gauge we got there. Okay, this is where everything went wrong. <laughs> the gauge for the top came out to seven and a half stitches and 13 rows. So that explains why it didn't fit because it has a lot fewer stitches per inch. Um, and because the stitches are so small on a standard gauge knitting machine, and there are so many of them, that kind of error really compounds. So um, it's interesting that the number of rows is still the same as my gauge swatch. <laughs> so it's fine top to bottom, it's just wrong in circumference. Um, but that's easy to fix. I can just plug the correct gauge into my pattern generator and I'll be fine. So why did this happen? I don't have a good answer for you. I suspect it has something to do with the way that the yarn was processed. Like these two yarns are supposed to be the same, the blue and the orange. It's entirely possible that the orange was processed slightly differently or something about the dye makes it behave differently when it's knit. I bought them both from Color Mart, and Color Mart does mill ends, so this is yarn that was used in manufacturing, and this is just what was left over, and that's what they sell. But as we have learned here, <laughs> it's important to swatch absolutely everything. Don't rely on previous knowledge to transfer. Okay, now let's figure out what went wrong with the armholes. The armhole depth is supposed to be the same on the front and the back, but you can see that it is much longer on the front than the back. Now that we know that the number of rows per inch is the same as what we would expect, we know what this distance should be. So if I measure it, I can figure out if the front is wrong or if the back is wrong. So measuring from the highest point to the lowest point, the back comes out to five inches, and then the front is going to be Okay, this is hard to measure because it's folded over. So that's six inches there, 
And then here we get another two inches. So that comes out to about eight inches. Um, and the expected armhole depth is seven inches. So the back is wrong. This is shorter than it needs to be, and I can go through and fix that in the pattern, but the front is also not quite right. It's an inch longer than it needs to be. And looking at the pattern here, I think I understand why. So you can see here the armhole decreases go up to here, and then the neckline decreases start here. I believe what's happening here is that these two need to happen concurrently. Like the neck hole decreases need to start happening while you're also decreasing for the armhole. And I know in the pattern I made an assumption that the armhole decreases would finish and then start the neckline decreases because of the way that this pattern was originally drafted for a crew neck. So the neckline was never expected to be this big. It makes sense that there are some minor issues um, with the way that it works. I need to go through the pattern and fix some of those assumptions and find a way to communicate that like these two need to happen at the same time. But this is all doable. And because I have drafted this pattern in code, it will be easy to fix. If it were something that I had done on paper, I'd have to redo all of the math by hand and risk making more mistakes. But I can just update the code for this and then knit a new one. All right, let's go fix the code. Let's figure out what's going on with this pattern. This is the editor for my website. It's hosted on a platform called Glitch. That is just an easy way to get up and started with React style sites. And my pattern is part of the set in sleeve knit block. And let's just pull up the pattern so we can take a look. Uh, all right, so the issue was that the front was too long and the back was too short. So let me look at the way this is doing the calculation for the front of the sweater. Okay, so I went back through and did the math and this is the correct number of stitches for the armhole depth that I want in the front. I think the discrepancy came from my measuring, which wasn't quite right. So let's take a look at the back of this. Okay, here it is. All right, it's fixed. Um, I was making assumptions about the distance to knit after you get to the bottom of the front neckline, um, which were wrong, <laughs> of course. And now it should be fine um, because we know that the back, actually, no, we don't need this. Um, the entirety of the back neckline shaping happens within the shaping for the shoulders with short rows because the back neckline is only one inch deep and the shaping short rows for the back of the shoulder is about an inch. So it happens in the same place and we don't need to subtract that from this. Okay, it's good. Let's go knit. The skirt starts the same way with an e-wrap cast on. If you want to see this in more detail, check out my gourd skirt video. The first row is always tricky. Then we can start the short rows to give the hem of the skirt a more circular shape. Remember to wrap the last needle as you go. Then I'm knitting up to the waist, decreasing as I go. The waist comes off on waist yarn.
And here's one panel. We need four of these. I'm going to skip the waistband instructions for the skirt and just rehang the live stitches. Making sure to overlap one stitch where the two gores meet. Then I'm going to start knitting the back piece of the top from these live stitches. With increases up to the underarm. Then bind off for the shelf. And hold back the flap with a claw weight. It's the same for the other side. Decrease for the underarm. Now I'm putting one shoulder into hold so I can knit the other one. The back neckline gets shaped at the same time as the shoulder. Bind off. And there's one shoulder. After finishing the second shoulder, I'm resetting the neckline stitches so I can bind off. And here's the back piece. The front is the same up to the neckline shaping.
Now we put one shoulder into hold. And decrease for the neckline. Then short row shaping through the shoulders. And bind off. There's one shoulder. The second shoulder is done exactly the same, and then I reset the neckline stitches to bind off. There's the front. Start by seaming the skirt panels. This is just a mattress stitch. Then attach the shoulder. And also the side seams, but apparently I didn't film that. Hmm, the waist is a little low, but this hasn't been blocked yet, so we'll wait and see how it goes after it's gone through the wash. Um, but it is dress shaped. It's entirely possible that the skirt is pulling the top down, and that's why the waist isn't in the right place. So here's the final dress, washed and blocked. It came out very close to what I was looking for. I'm still off by an inch on the back shoulder depth, but that's an easy fix in the pattern. And I have belted it because the skirt is fairly heavy and it's pulling the top down, but with the belt there it stays in place. And it should be fine for the few hours that I'm going to wear it. Yeah, this is only really possible because I drafted both of these patterns to kind of meet at a waist measurement. So the top of the skirt with exactly as many stitches as the bottom of the bodice, so I could just rehang the stitches and keep knitting upward. Let me show it to you without the belt because it's really seamless. It's just like a great summer dress. All right, I think we're gonna end it here.
This is just one video in a long line of videos about this dress that I'm making to wear to wedding at the end of the summer. Um, I have more plans for changes to the top, that might be another video or two, so stick around to see the final product. Thanks for watching, happy knitting!